Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unsan Chitta. We at One Mind Zen here chant a fair amount. Uh, I don't know that we chant any more uh, or less than other sanghas, especially in in our order. Um, if you remember seeing the uh, chanting service for uh, Venerable Wanji, uh, Myohei Doan is a world-class chanter and uh, he puts some of us to shame <clears throat> that being said, we still chant anyway. And, you know, we chant the Heart Sutra every week, and we have a few other things that, when you get down to it, are more like recitations than chants, I suppose. Um, but we do them. And the question is why? Why do we bother? Why don't we just walk in, sit down, face a wall? walk around a couple of times, sit and face the wall, walk around again, and then see it. And the reason is because there is a function to meditation that isn't readily apparent. Um, we're in a uh, Sung San derived order. And um, when he first became uh, a monk, one of the first things that happened was he went on a 100 day uh, chanting retreat up in the mountains, uh, supposedly eating nothing but uh, ground up pine needles to the point where his skin turned green. And he would sit there and bang the muktak and chant the great Dharani, I believe it was, for like 20 hours a day. And uh, it was after that 100-day uh, retreat that he did that he came back down to uh, the monastery and uh, met with his teacher, and uh, there were some checks that they did um, in order to verify his, his status. And um, I forget which Kung An it was exactly that uh, his teacher had given him, but it was one of those that, you know, at first, if, if you don't succeed, try, try again. Well, he was in the try, try again mood. And uh, so it, it took a while. And I, I want to say that it was the uh, mouse eats cat food, or the cat bowl, cat food, <laughs> cat's bowl is already broken. Uh, however, you want to spit that one out. But um, Eventually, you know, he came up with a, uh, a response that was acceptable and um, the rest, as they say, is history. He came over to the U.S. and started uh, the Providence Zen Center and the Quantum School, you know, globally. And uh, <clears throat> we get a lot of our chants out of the, uh, the Quantum uh, school chant book. In fact, it's on our website, courtesy of our own Kevin Haysong Sheridan, whose camera is off. And uh, so we're in there and, and we, um, we use them. We don't chant nearly as many as they do at, at Providence and Center, but, um, you know, I haven't seen one of their zoom services so maybe they don't chant as much or more who knows i don't know i haven't seen any of their services so i can't uh honestly say but there's a little story um 
Sung San was at the um, International Zen Center in New York. And a, uh, a student asked him, why do you chant? Isn't sitting Zen enough? And uh, Dai Sun Sun said, this is a very important matter. We bow together, chant together, eat together, sit together, and do many other things together here at the Zen Center. So why do we practice together? And that's an important question. Why do we practice together? Um, there are those who would uh, possibly say that um, doing all these things, chanting, sitting, eating, bowing, that when we do them all together, it's like we're uh, becoming automatons or we're, you know, our identities are being erased or whatever. And as if that's a bad thing. Um, in our case, yes, that is a way to unattach from this, you know, great individualist self that I'm so proud of because I do all this stuff. And uh, like I said, you know, yes, you've got to apply your own cosmic um noxima but that doesn't mean that we can't all go out and uh get sunburned together um we do these things together to rid ourselves of this sense of a permanent permeating i am really important self. Um, in, in their case at the uh, Zen centers there, it's just part of the routine. They do these things. Um, they get up at 5.30 in the morning and they bow 108 times. Why? Because that's what they do. And it's no more or less important than uh, getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth or whatever other routine you might have. It's just something that you do. It's no big deal. It's no nothing personal. There's no um, burden by doing it. It's just what you do. You know, when you visit grandma's house at Thanksgiving time, if she's serving green bean casserole, you're gonna have some green bean casserole because grandma has always served green bean casserole and everyone always eats it. Even if nobody really particularly likes it, they just do it because that's part of the ritual. Like I said, it's nothing personal. It's just something you do. So here with us, uh, we chant. And it seems like the amount of time we're spending chanting is even increasing. Uh, we've added a couple of new ones at the end. Um, but they're important. It's a way for us to step away from the great I am and move into that place where uh, big I is taking over the place of small I, okay? When we bow, we can bow to each other, but if we're just bowing like 108 times to start off the day, we're not bowing to the Buddha, we're not bowing to our teacher, we're not bowing to anything other than big I is bowing to little I. Little I is bowing to big I. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, there have been some times when I've said some things to the effect of, um, like chanting the Heart Sutra in, in 
Korean-ish. It's actually just signified uh, Korean, but anyway, uh, chanting, chanting the Heart Sutra in Korean or, or anything else in any other language that I don't understand, as far as I'm concerned, is great. You know, there were times when, when like the, the Heart Sutra is uh, almost treated like a piece of prose. Like, you know, it's linear and there's a start and there's a finish and there's a story and there's the things in the middle. <clears throat> and that's all well and good. And it is a great uh, sutra, but as far as I'm concerned, it's an even better chant. And the foreign language version, even better than that. And you would say, that's nonsense. Unsan, what the hell? That's ridiculous. You don't even speak the language. Why are you chanting in it? <clears throat> to which I reply, when I chant in some language other than uh, my own native tongue, that I have to really pay attention to, in our case, the beat of the Moktak. I have to pay really close attention to the rhythm of everybody else who's chanting. I have to pay really close attention to the words that I'm chanting, the syllables, I suppose, is even more accurate because if I lose my place anywhere, I'm totally screwed, right? So I have to pay attention to them. I have to pay attention to the Muktak. I have to pay attention to myself. I have to hear my own voice blending in with everyone else's. And then when we do that, we're doing together action, right? We're doing something as a unit that's greater than the individual parts. You wanna throw the word synergy in, uh, you're welcome to. It's a way for us to do together action. It's a way for the big eye to take over in all of our cases, kiss the little eye goodbye, and just do something as a unit, forgetting the self, forgetting the I am so enlightened aspect that we can have sometimes. So with that, why do we chant? Why do we chant? Because we chant. 